of young scientists is a platform that brings together young inventors in order to create new opportunities for them and also in turn facilitate the improvement of science in Sri Lanka. We and Space have come up with this new and the most trending approach to motivate our young inventors by having discussions with great intellectuals of Sri Lanka. This approach is to have small discussions with great intellectuals of Sri Lanka with the intention of making them more motivated onto the researchers, onto the inventions that they do. To make an inspiration among the young generation, we have with us today a chemical engineer, a lecturer, a director, dean, head, and a very successful researcher here with us today, Professor Ajit Diyarki. So we warmly welcome you to our program here today. From what we have heard and what we have seen about you, we know that you have a very strong liking onto chemistry, onto chemical findings. Apart from this strong like onto chemistry, sir, what other hobbies have you had during your childhood? And what have you brought from your childhood up to today, sir? Thank you, first of all. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, and to say a few words, uh, from hopefully to inspire the, the younger generation to move in. And specifically, I have some, perhaps a long association with SLES since started uh, when I was in the academy. Um, so, uh, and I think Sri Lanka needs uh, this younger group seriously motivated and committed to, of course, to change Sri Lanka and to support Sri Lanka with that uh, those in growth. So in that context, I'm quite happy to say a few words um, in my own capacity or with some of the learnings that I have had over the period of time. Answering your question, yes, I did like chemistry and I do like chemistry. Uh, but these days, actually, I spend more time saying okay, what you're doing is not chemistry, um, chemical engineering, because of certain perceptions in Sri Lanka, but not. Uh, because uh, chemical engineering, being now at chemical engineering rather than doing chemistry. But going back, the reason probably was a teacher. Uh, and if you go back with a lot of inventors and people, even if you take for a matter of Edison, right? Chemistry has been a great subject. Probably again, the childhood, you like this changing colors, you put one and two together and the colors are changed. Uh, maybe these days of the childhood, sometimes this is not seen. I mean, in Sri Lanka, you cannot get a chemistry set. When you speak to any Nobel laureate in chemistry, sometimes you hear that uh, they are, the way they change their, uh, I mean, channeling these energies to that particular area has been this exposure to the chemistry set at a very early stage, right? Uh, think about it, we don't have it here in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, somehow this teacher, during these experiments, showing, demonstrating the experiments, he never had labs to speak of. But um, mixing those things, the colors coming out was pretty exciting. I mean, what you see is what is not there. Suddenly, you see in front of your eyes a completely different thing. Things are coming out, colors are being changed, face is also being changed. Sometimes, like, okay, precipitates, you may say, so something solid is happening from a liquid, and so on. So, that kind of thing was very exciting. And uh, what really happened was, okay, I decided to set up a small lab at home. It's not a very professional thing, but. Uh, uh, I did put up a lab buying things. I'm not an inventor in that way because I never went to the appropriate technology or uh, somehow doing things, but I really wanted the beak, I wanted to have the burette, I wanted to have the measuring cylinder as they have been seen. So I was really focusing on uh, what I have seen at the class or what I have seen in the pictures, I wanted them at home as well. So that obviously you can imagine, then only a few things were sourced and that's what I had. Uh, and bits of uh, Certain building blocks also proved to be my lab, uh, lab material storage units. That's some plastic, so of course they're not, not having acids and stuff, so they withstood the uh, chemical attack, not a problem. Um, so chemistry I liked, and uh, if I had to say another one, you asked about others. Not a person with multiple hobbies, we did few things, uh, but one thing that still stays with me on, not the chemistry part of it, but the, the library part of it. Right? Uh, collecting books, reading books and so on and always like to set up some sort of repository at some point even today I try that. Um, so library would have been my second choice, professional choice if I not gone into chemical engineering. I decided to go to chemical 
entering after reading a book at British Council. I've said this a few times. I can still visualize that small book a uh, long time back. And when I read it, I saw chemistry coming to the benefit of the society. That was the point. Right? When you do chemistry in that, it was like more abstract to work, uh, you mix things, you see that. But then I read this part of the operations, the engineering part of it, where it's, it's powering transportation, whether it's a ship or a plane or vehicles, and giving light and all sorts of things, and thanks to some chemical reactions. And then I thought, okay, it's what is better is uh, having an impact. Uh, rather than purely studying, uh, purely working on some of the abstract of these principles. So I switched to this and um, looking at going to Peradenia because that's where chemical engineering was. And um, one fine day from the school, uh, I went to Morocco to sell some sick tickets um, for when the Guru Hall was being opened uh, and saw that in the applied science faculty department, uh, there is chemical engineering department. I ended up being going there. But the big point for me is that books. And I just feel very sad today when students do not read. I asked this question from the, when you start mentoring, what was your last book? I mean, students are trying hard to remember a name of a book. They don't like the book, but uh, you can see the puzzle look, okay, what's the book? I mean, if you have been reading, we say usually, uh, you must read quite a number of books and general number that has been thrown about is about 30 per year, 30 decent books per year in different subjects. Uh, if you have been looking at what, uh, Bill Gates is throwing out the reading list. Zuckerberg is throwing out the reading list. And I compare between those two. Bill Gates is throwing out, okay, you can see it's of the different generation, but Mark Zuckerberg is also coming out and say, like, look, read this, his choice of books, right? Um, and reading is good. But another kind of fundamental sentence that you remember is what Einstein mentioned. If you don't want to know anything, but the one thing, that is the location of the library. Right. So from that context, I was actually bringing the library to my home and trying to give. So that's how that stayed on. That's the hobby of the song. But now from trying to promote that to the others, not myself collecting very much. I'm trying to ensure somehow others get into this habit. So is that, this is how a great hobby you've been making you a great person. You having a library at your home, you having a chemistry lab at your home. It was all because of just the hobby which was reading. Right, so, so uh, shall we tell our young inventors, young uh, viewers about uh, how this hobby has brought you to become a researcher, has brought you to become a very good inventor? Yeah. Good inventor, I'm not sure. Right, I don't want to take the credit from those marvelous people. I have been associated with marvelous people. I'm pretty sure you should uh, speak to some of them. But maybe a little bit of a researcher, yes, but not a not an inventor. Right, though name is there with few patents. Uh, it's by association of the decent people or the great people. Uh, haven't had the name there, but I won't claim much to those. But research, yes, again, it's interesting. I mean, it's about doing some things. You know? Like you read and you see how, how uh, and one thing I also recommend to students always to go for biographies, read uh, autobiographies and biographies because most of the time millennials and the new generation want everything to happen to them at one go. Um, they don't, uh, sometimes if they are not being served with what they want almost immediately, you feel kind of like uh, a green party, right? We, Look, I'm here, I'm not being served, uh, but I need it, and you blame the system, and so on, and that's happening. But uh, when you see this, uh, how people have overcome problems and went into achieve uh, and really deliver to the society, the transformation people, um, they had their, it's not a rosy life, right? it's been through difficulty, but they stuck to their guns. I mean, basically, you stuck to your principles or your ideas and uh, was hell bent on achieving them, right? And, that's what, so the fortune favors the brave almost, and that's the kind of scenario that. Uh, okay, my foray into research, um, I can take up many things, but also interesting one was PhD one, uh, but I would like to take one brief after that. PhD one, of course, what I did was my choice was uh, when I was, I went from Sri Lanka to the UK with a different objective in mind. The research area was quite different, the application. But when I was offered something by a young, uh, young staff member in the university, um, I realized, okay, he is not aware of this topic at all, but that is his brand new topic. And then I went for that. And 
leaving aside all my previous thinking because to me that was interesting because he knew i mean i knew that he is not aware of it and so it was like almost virgin grounds to explore and uh, and it paid off uh, significantly uh, in terms of publications in terms of uh, i have seen even awards uh, because we were doing something brand new and it was a process that had to be explained so i had the i had the uh, ability or rather the uh, fortune to see that i was able to explain it not a great thing it was just stuck into the basics uh, i managed to explain it i remember those times when uh, the limited computing facility but then of course that university had some decent facilities for spending like three days at a stretch i do no sleep um, going home very quickly to eat some chocolate ghetto and that was the energy coming back i still remember the january 1st uh, it was like 3 a.m on january 1st uh, i kind of identified the errors and the code and it gave me the result and i i i ensured that that particular graph went into the thesis too it was all possible because it was new and uh, so uh, thereafter again something uh, come across with uh, professor wills uh, who has come up with this uh, conservation biology um, he started uh, there's a nice book about uh, advice to the young researchers right uh, in that he says some few things uh, i have slipped, mentioned that is laser from find uh, it says uh, move away from the sound of guns right if you are a young researcher if you want to start something move away from the sound of guns which is completely different to what a military strategist would tell right military strategist means that if you have a if you are fighting on something you are sending reinforcement or you want to win the battle you look at you look at the sounds of the guns and push your men into that direction because that's where the action is but a researcher that his advice is move away from that action because there are a lot of people fighting out there try to select some area that is nobody is doing right and that's that's a territory to explore but of course it has to be exciting just don't because nobody has tried doesn't mean it may be right or it's useful but look at what you are interested to do and contribute and keep at it and then you move in so it's rhymed well and that's looking back that's what i have done i completely switched from what i did i went into energy i ended up doing food right at uh, i was electrocuting food basic so it was a entirely new way of electrocuting food um and it was so happy doing that so then you see results coming out uh, and different variations some uh, things that i've read before means that you can write about them so as a researcher you see there's a big difference between a researcher and an inventor the researcher is a person who actually carries out some investigation in a very systematic manner um but inventors are more interesting researchers are probably not that interesting because you have a set life and you know what you have to do you may have the objective of phd and some simple stuff so there's a little bit more of a uh, narrative connected to what you are what you are mainly interested but inventors they are they have a belief in themselves they have an idea that i can do something and when you switch may go in different directions and come out something different uh so inventors cannot be predicted easily and uh, and they are probably more exciting to listen to uh, than research of course it research maybe what you have done maybe of interest to listen to uh so subsequently again an area that have captured my uh, serious interest is biogas uh, but that's again something i remember in 1983 um i went to visit uh, we were actually part of a team that went to visit uh, student aid group that went to visit that all bit here world's first renewable energy village right hardly any sri lankan still take it as the world's first subsequently only i got to know that is the world first i looked at it i contacted the people in different local mass state university and uh, and so on and then to listen to the story later on uh, you walk into that place at metal pti it's supposed to be very, it, it is a beautiful village uh, so down south and uh, you go through that and come to this and then while walking through you also see that like big stones and it says that okay go time brother in his childhood uh, was he was identified by the dramanu uh, that for the strengths uh, is one of the dasam ayodhyas no right and uh, and that he was throwing this big heavy uh, st- stuff and that kind of demonstrated from very early age that this child is an extraordinary child in terms of ability on strength and uh, to find uh, united nations unep program selected this village thinking 1973 mind you when the energy crisis was has started and sri lanka was selected to do anaerobic digestion or biogas as a collaborative operation 
and they have selected this village because it's a beautiful village. It has folklore in terms of Gota Emperor's hometown kind of village from where he came. And then the mountains in the same down south, uh, beautiful, I mean, simply beautiful. And uh, they transformed this village to run on energy coming from solar, wind, biogas, all that. And biogas was the centerpiece, right? Uh, powering about 40 odd houses with electricity. That's like almost a small mini grid. And, uh, and gas for cooking, gas for cooking. So that stuck with me. And now we have done quite a lot of work in that. But still, not been able to fully forcefully convince the Sri Lankan system to move in that direction. Still fighting on the solid base. Still, still you can see Colombo, we are trying to burn the gas to get energy, burn the solid base to get energy. I completely disagree with that system. Uh, so they have shown me to research the potential. Have you doing in those areas? Yes, so which means that if you have a dream and passion towards a particular thing, you can reach it. Yet to reach, to convince to get Sri Lanka into biogas into the grid, yet to happen, yet to happen. And I see one broad project that's still being kind of like pushed back. And it's quite clear, but you should have that. You should have that um, um, attitude of come what may, you'll be doing this. I'm very happy doing this because I enjoy doing that. You should never do that for, uh, if you don't enjoy it or do that. So research should be fun and that's important. Uh, but you must also believe in the area that you're working on. It's also important. And with that, the question and the attitude and probably the commitment, it's not a short term, it's, it's not an easy journey. You may spend a lot of time. And uh, I, we have had interesting things. We have, we didn't get support to get uh, material to our campus premises. So we went with our own mammoth and the vehicle and brought in and then people stealing cow dung. Right, so you don't imagine people stealing cow dung, but that didn't happen. Um, that's the way. It's fun. <laughs> yes, so, so it's not a straight path to success. You sure should have hurdles. That's how you get success and you get the real happiness of the success that you reach. So, so what do you think, uh, what are the advices that you can give to the younger generation? As you said, they expect a straight path to success. They are not willing to go through the hurdles of life. What, what are your advices for the younger generation or the younger Research is coming up. My opening comment, or rather to say something very big, and I just I remember like something when uh, one of the most respected individuals I have listened to is Abdul Kalam. And uh, when he was in Sri Lanka, he made foreign tour to two places. Something his advice to students was uh, do something meaningful, right? Uh, get into an area and contribute with that time of yours. Everyone has this time. And the way we contribute our time to serve others and the type of thing. Now I said about research enjoyment, but it's also about doing something for the outside. I mean, why you are here? Not to help yourself all the time, right? Hopefully you are here. There has to be something coming out of you to the rest. And that part is important. So select problems. Select problems and um, seek answers. And that's your task. And don't allow uh, problems to grow into even the bigger ones when probably you have the ability and the talent to contribute. So that's why I always push and think that we must contribute in areas. And if you have that talent, engage in something meaningful. So I hate uh, when we squander time, right? And that's why I hate in administration, uh, we see so much of wasted time. At the end of the day, what have we done? Nothing. Nothing much. Uh, and we feel sad, but then. But then uh, you can't give up on Sri Lanka, right? This is the place that we are. And at this stage, we have a responsibility to do something here. So must give something and uh, must push. So first and the foremost, select something that you can meaningfully contribute to. And do not engage in um, wasting time, even though that may be quite pleasurable, but don't do that. Right? So we are all perfect. We are not perfect, but um, so I can't expect hundred percent. No, probably I might be doing like that, but try to think about it when you select something and use it. Thank you. So, uh, can we know about that? We know that you have done a lot of research. Can we know about the one or two researchers that you have a very high interest in, maybe that are young people? 
investors, researchers know about this? Well, I've been into many sectors, um, and some sectors still need to learn quite a lot. Area that has come closer right now has been the engagement to nanotechnology. Right uh, now, in the nanotechnology, I've seen some brilliant scientists who came together at uh, Yagama as per the nanotechnology, National Nanotechnology Initiative. So, I had the chance of being a team member. At the beginning, to setting things up, so more not not exactly nano was not expected from me. Uh, what was expected was setting the ground, uh, but we ventured into a uh, uh, lot of materials that we have, a lot of uh, minerals resources that we have to find out that they are fantastic high quality. Right, uh, it's strange, Sri Lanka as a country. I say that uh, we are a treasure island in nanotechnology times. But this treasure island has not been really again understood. Uh, whatever the minerals that we have, from even the silica to the mineral sands to the graphite inside, they are all like 99.99 clear uh, purity, right? So it's a very interesting thing somehow which happened in Sri Lanka. I mean, it's like graphite. That's the only known deposit in the world. This big vein graphite deposit is the only known one. Now this tiny island I'm unimaginable to think what how it happened here, right? So the people who come up with how the this land formation took place and then the continents collides and then they say okay this is how this happened. But to think we have this 99.9 purity and I remember a story of a Toyota top research scientist who came to Sri Lanka to look at it and when someone from Peradhania mentioned how it's 99.9, forget it, this is hundred percent, right? I mean that's you don't get in nature this type of purity and that's what we have right you go into magnetite you go into silica you go into many uh, even titanium we are one of the top quality deposits in the world you go to a power appetite it's a top quality deposit in the world right so yet with that we speak of uh, serious debt and uh, living from day to day it um, available towards the uh, economy right which is uh, it's a sad situation. So there are the scientists, uh, can, researchers can seriously do, but we must also convince entrepreneurs and the others to move in the direction because we as probably as researchers, you see, do not have the access to the decision making to channel money. I mean, Sri Lanka is so poor in channeling money to research. We are one of the, the worst 10 countries in the world, right? So 0.9% of the GDP, and that's again, sizable percentage go to the researcher salary stipend it's not a big one so we are in the worst 10 countries if you look at it in some recent analysis in allocation so uh, so we need to we need to have this extrapolator to convince and get something and but then this transformational aspect uh, so nano is one area again i've worked on uh, something like uh, with a retired navy director of electronics was a very interesting electronics engineer but uh, He's not using mobile at all, he's a retired person. I want to do a PhD. So I said, uh, why don't we do something with the disensitized solar stars? Actually, it was a spin off from another research. What we did was uh, I used the chemical industry knowledge where the Germany changed, uh, the whole economy changed because of a dye, right? Uh, Perkins dye, indigo dye, they came up and uh, they manufactured. You see the world's number one company, BASF. The history will go back, it was manufacturing this textile dye. And uh, we had, an, had another PhD work on natural dye extractions. And uh, we were trying to say, okay, natural dyes can transform our economy. For one thing today, we talked about all these our textiles that we wear, we are using synthetic dyes. And there are a lot of issues with synthetic dyes and there's now, there's an, a bit interest in moving to natural dyes. No allergenic effects, no uh, chemical uh, toxicity is associated uh, and we, uh, we did about hundred, um, quite a lot on array of natural dye extracts and looked into this. So with that, when an electronic engineer came to me, I said, okay, why don't we combine and see how to get natural dyes into, it's been there, I mean, I, I, it's been there. In fact, uh, Professor Tennaborn apparently has, uh, in fact, I've seen the research paper, has come in for Sri Lanka as the first person to do it, this natural dye sensitized uh, Dye sensitized because early it has been used with the SCCs, it has been used uh, uh, with ruthenium and so on. But uh, this natural dye usage apparently has come from Professor Tenenbaum. 
Sri Lanka has not staked a claim on that. Um, now the world knows it has great cell cells, right? And IFS, uh, now you will see that they are just making a claim. They are saying that apparently it's just interest on uh, growing flowers because they are not interested in growing flowers. And uh, then one day when he was having a cup of tea, apparently he has uh, seen this dye stain on the cup as you drink and then you see that there's like a stain from Kahata, right? And he has looked that knowledge and transferred that and it has worked. It has worked uh, well in the solar cell. So we did that work and we said, okay, now we have done about 150 such plants. We have extracted dyes. Let us think about it. And we came up with the mangosteen. Uh, mangosteen as the best uh, sensitizer for that. Unfortunately, again, publishing takes time in our case and we are not we have a fast tracking that. So there was a paper that came just after we have come to that conclusion. A Chinese paper came uh, doing about uh, 1% efficiency we at 4.8 so that was the largest highest value that we recorded but then once the Chinese published one person forget it you don't have any choice you, you, your research yes uh, it's there that's it um, so uh, it's just looking at opportunities about uh, how we can do that later on I had a chance to be at this university in Switzerland where they have uh, these uh, their conference conference center has is desensitized panels and so on and that's one of the interesting things when research happens in our country, we don't get that same support uh, to push back and let's say oh, this is the window that is doing using this and the students see that type of thing and then they can go to the next level. So students do not observe the research that is taking place most of the time because it's like in two different silos. I mean, you're supposed to be undergraduates, you're supposed to be researchers, we don't merge them together. And that's something I would like to change with uh, hopefully I get a chance to meet the dean a bit. Maybe we'll try. Because or do we want to do something interesting? Okay, so, uh, so uh, we found the intention that you have done, and what we, sorry, with all the researches that you have done, and uh, with your knowledge about the current trends, what do you think uh, is the uh, field or subject that we should focus a bit more in VR to uh, improve our national economy? You see, uh, today we speak of like four industrial revolutions taking place in parallel. That's uh, not talking about the industry four, the cyber physical systems. I'm talking about nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, and the new kid on the block is neurotechnology. Right? You find the uh, US having a brain project, uh, the blue brain project in EU, 27 countries coming and doing. So that's about uh, like the computer and the computing and brain trying to, I don't know, is AI coming in, all that, right? Um, so, to me, um, to me, I won't recommend one subject area, but uh, I would always recommend to a student to be that T person. The T person is like, uh, you try to get an in-depth, because if you're going to move away from the undergraduate research and so on, to have a, a serious interest in one area. But I'm again change this T concept into a pi concept um, which is uh, again this I kind of discussed with a member of staff at Runa I have to discuss this so I said okay why don't we become that pi in the sense two depth areas that is not just one area but two areas where you have your depth you try to work from and then your T is you have to have cross cutting understanding right so, but a very solid foundation. We lose the basic and that's one of our problems. When you move into engineering, we forget the science part. And we think, okay, that is not relevant, right? Now, this is one of the most problematic things when you discuss chemistry in engineering. We try to say, okay, chemistry is almost hated in the country, right? By the person, people who are doing math. But that's, that we have become a very unique country in forgetting biology now, forget the chemistry. The biology is absolutely a no-go area for an engineer, right? But now you see it's changing. Now, the biomedical engineering, you have uh, at one or two at electronics, uh, you teach biology, the medical college, lecturer comes and select uh, to teach, and a full, full, full length and breadth of the human, you know, all that's been taught at one go, you come back. Um, see, the fundamental sciences, the biology and so on, we need to have it, and the maths and so on. And then economic as a guiding principle for the engineer. 
Um, so I won't recommend one subject, but we be aware of uh, this, this uh, what's happening in nanotechnology, what's happening in this uh, neurotech, and so on, and then think, okay, I like this. And something we speak, uh, speak on chemical engineering is that there are all these interesting things happening on the interface. The interface meaning when you have bring two subjects together, right? At the interface, A comes with some idea, B comes with another idea, and the interface something innovative can happen. And there are a lot of examples in the inventor space. This this interface development, right? Uh, to just to tell a story, it's like that. We had a, a staff member from King's College meeting a sabbatical. A director of arts coming from Italy, right? Uh, this person was has a creative mindset. Uh, he asked the question, uh, "Can we uh, spray text uh, cloth? I mean, like make a clothing by spray." And uh, of course, this other person, why he asked spray was, other person was a, a, a particle technologist. He was a chemical engineering staff member at uh, King's College, and uh, they put their minds together and fab on a fabric and you can go to YouTube and check. Uh, there is this. Uh, they called a uh, uh, catwalk where entire all the designs textiles have been from a can it's like from a wd-40 type can you just spray on clothing you have your hats you have your wedding dress all stuff coming from the can so it's an interface thing art director asking knowing what other person can do exercising carefully asking a question and the other person saying can do and will do and they they float in a company so I, I would say students need to interest, have this interest about, okay, I don't want a problem to be there in the outside. Let me see what I can do to solve. And in the solving process, you should be able to see, look, it's an area that, uh, that probably can help in this and come out with solutions. I mean, look at these days. What you talk about here is a mask is N95. How is N95 came? How is N95 came? It was a lone designer, Sarah Turnbull. 1958, right? She was um, she's a designer, but she has she had this creative habit. She saw a material, and this material was a non-woven uh, polymer, and still the non-woven PP is what is used for a 95 and a mask. And uh, she came up with uh, she has been treating few patients at home, their relatives, I think maybe the parents or one one mother or father, and she has seen how the nursing staff is kind of getting problems with this. Inhalation, exhalation, coughing, all that, they were not really protected. She won, she came up with this mask. So, and then just before that, she had a patent for the bra cup. She had a patent for the bra, I mean, like bra and surname there. And she decided, okay, this can be your mask. Right. So, when in 19, I think in 95 was perfect or somewhere in late 70s, a company. Uh, so she decided, uh, she came up with a presentation of 100 things you can do with this material, 100 things. So that was the startup for the 3M, like the idea. So she was a very valued designer and you can see how things happen. So you have to exercise your mind and you have to exercise and to you understand problems out there. And you should get that passion, so let, me, let me come up with a solution. And to use that solution, come up with a solution, let me bring science and technology. Uh, so not just one subject. So please don't stick to one, and don't hate subjects, right? And don't look at subjects as something like okay, drudgery that you have to go through. See the creative spots that you get from the subject, and if you enjoy that, pursue more. If you don't, okay, leave it that and go in your direction. A lot of people who have gone back to chemistry and biology. We have engineer, uh, engineering graduates who are now seriously into biology. Because uh, they may have rejected biology, but now they see it's important. I mean, to speak of biology as a, the science of the 21st century. I mean, that's one that we go because we talk about machines and bios coming together, life coming together. So there's a huge interest in this one. We need to know about it. Okay, so uh, which means that a student should be multidisciplinary, not simply focusing on the main subject area that they're supposed to do. So uh, we all know that this century, starting from this 2021 to 2030, is going to be a kind of challenging set of years for us. So do you think that the, this research, this research which will be uh, ultimately leading on to innovations, will be helping us? Will be helping 
as us as a country or to the entire world? Um, you should decide and you should think that what am I engaging in today, what I'm thinking today should have a meaningful output. Remember I told you that the advice don't do something that's not really relevant, don't waste time, right? Just purely don't indulge yourself in just enjoying, right? So that is kind of like pushing you to be more responsible as a citizen, true. Um, it has to be because this is a decade, we are just starting 2021, 2030, we have this 17 SDG goals. Uh, supposed to be nobody is going to be left behind. It looks like very dicey that it's not, may not happen that way. Uh, but we can't, we need to really focus our minds on uh, in that direction and see how what can I contribute. As Sri Lanka definitely have multiple issues, right? I mean, the globe is having issues. We talk about having needing more food, needing more water, needing more energy. So this, this food, water, uh, energy nexus is a very broad area. So, right, uh, that's, that gives you enough space to work on, right? Uh, and water, we do have problems. Energy, we have problems. Food, we have problems. Sri Lanka, unfortunately, again, when you see UNICEF reports, uh, we are in the worst 10 countries for child nutrition. That's again, and I, to me, it's something that we have no excuse whatsoever for having that, achieving that position. We are in 28, we were sand, we have sandwiched once between Eritrea and Somalia. And I don't think as Sri Lanka, I would like to see the children of the country having that nutritional problem. The mind of the problem is when a child is deprived of decent nutrition at the formative stage, entire cognitive development is affected. And I kind of say that we are, by that, we are putting more children towards politics rather than uh, anything else. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, so, finally, do you have uh, something like a final advice for our young generation out there? The advice is, uh, well, this is a young generation that is not really seeking advice, uh, right? They are more uh, capable of giving advice themselves because it's really good. I mean, you are, you are thinking, you are, you are forming your own ideas and so on, but it's okay. But uh, given the chance to say something, my view is, um, see in Sri Lanka, we have suffered uh, from significant brain drain. And uh, I remember this year, Little lengthy answer, maybe. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Um, Sri Lanka dropped in our global innovation index, going down to uh, from 89th place to 101 first place, right? So that's serious drop. Probably we were one of the uh, countries that was having experiencing a worse drop in the rating. Whereas India climbed up to the top 50. Singapore has been always on the top 10. For the last eight years, they've been on the top 10. And we know how Singapore, we say Singapore looked up to Sri Lanka to, look, to do their, to their development. And here we are, bottom of the pipe, right? In terms of nutrition, I mentioned, in terms of R&D expenditure, in terms of child nutrition, you look around, we have a problem. And uh, if you look at the climate risk index, Sri Lanka is now put the last right, is the world's worst second country. So we are the uh, in the climate risk index. This question you asked about 2030 going to 2020. We are talking about these environmental aspects. Uh, climate risk, we are the number two worst, right? That means. So after Puerto Rico. Now I don't think, um, I may not exactly like this idea, uh, the data may not be right, but that's what the world has pushed up or recorded us against, right? Uh, pushed it. So there's a lot that we have to do to change. And I don't think this change can happen by others coming in and helping. Consultancy is not going to solve this problem. Just plain advice from outside is not going to solve this problem. You have to take a stock of the situation and see, look, this is, I don't accept this. There has to be the change. And it has to be those who are coming into the society um, with this all education and the learning, they have to deliver. But what we see most of the time, I've looked at an innovation, we had the global uh, head of innovation index, uh, Dr. Sasha, who actually visited Sri Lanka, costing 
um, at Costia, if you remember Sanjay, um, that uh, and he well, he came on Sunday and he went to the hotel because he was trying to dress us the next day. He opt, op, opened Sunday observer. Next day morning, the first thing he told me was, uh, in your newspapers, you see so many advertisements and so on, pushing Sri Lanka, your children to go out. Right? And uh, that he said, I've never seen it like this anywhere. Right? And because he was saying, it's always about outside. And you will not get, uh, if you have this approach, you are not going to get, because students or the children are kind of, they are, their mindset is set by what's the message they are going to get and this is the message that you get, right? So you can't, uh, you can't uh, blame them, you have to look at the system. But my advice is uh, then, then understand the position that the Sri Lanka is in. And but also understand the potential that we have. It's a hotbed of opportunities in a way. You name biodiversity, we have the best. You have for even for energy with the transit, drink of Mali and so on, even for renewables. We are a tropical country. Uh, there's so much you can do with the, uh, the solar and stuff like that, even with the OTEC and stuff. And the minerals, top of the, the best of class minerals. And nanotechnology, just begging for that. Right? Yeah, so that's biodiversity wise, unmatched. I mean, like it's the most significant country. Um, so there's opportunity. And uh, you should see, okay, why don't we come together in doing this change? And that would be my idea. You may form your own opinion. I know you are more likely to form your own opinion at this day. You are the millennials or the, the youngsters who are coming up the next generation. But probably try to think a bit and look at what your responsibility should be. Thank you, sir. Whatever you have told us today sure is an influence even to us, to the young inventors, to everyone who is viewing this YouTube channel. So thank you so much for coming, uh, for participating in this interview session for the video. It is a great influence. It sure will be a great influence for all the young inventors out there. I hope they take your advice. They, I hope they help us, they are the future of the country. I hope they help us bring up Sri Lanka as a nation. And once again, I thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thank you, Dibya. We have come to the end of our first interview of Genius Island by Slates. And it sure has been a very successful interview. We hope to come back to you soon with more interviews. Stay tuned with Genius Island by Slates.